Hey, thank you for checking out the Blessing Report with our Meat Not Milk podcast. And we have a great special guest today. <laughs> Very good friend, yes, amazing sir. man, poet, but most of all, disciple of Jesus Christ, John Wood formerly known as Spoken Wood, or currently known as Spoken Wood. <laughs> formerly, 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 formerly known as Spoken the, Wood. The artist formerly known as Prince. <laughs> right. And uh, we have a really dope episode for you today, mm-hmm. and it is, what does Kobe Bryant teach us about death? And so we just want to acknowledge and our condolences to the families that were yeah. in the helicopter crash yeah. in um, January. That happened or February? I think it was in January. February. Oh, January. And um, just, just like prayers and just active like engagement and just like what the Bible says about mourn with those who mourn and um, just being the hands and feet of Christ. So very um, casual conversation about death and about even like Kobe Bryant. Um, I know that he was the focus because he was famous yeah. and he was um, a champion, but I really want to like focus on the overarching themes of like um, death and stuff. So my first point um, that I want to talk about is God does not care about your plans. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, I think, <laughs> yep. yeah, that's the really the biggest thing, like, us learning that, you know, that's just coming for everybody and, like, no respect to a person, mm. you know, in, in regards to that, like... I think, and you were right it was like February but it was like the first week of February oh, it yeah. was like the first two days like <laughs> Black like, oh, History Month exactly it was like slump <laughs> I'm like this is how we coming in February is this what's going on um, but yeah he, yeah, your plans it's, 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 it's not his plans it don't matter it's facts and I think um, I think it fits on like several levels why um, it hits so hard um, number one, Kobe Bryant is famous, mm-hmm. right? Very. And so I think um, there's just this Western or even American thing of like celebrity worship. And if you are famous, you are untouchable. Yeah, yeah. And I think the first time I saw like a celebrity is actually very touchable is Paul Washer from um, Fast and the Furious Paul movies. Mm-hmm. Paul, Paul Walker, my yeah, bad. Because mm-hmm. he died. Like, Suddenly. I, bro, I thought like, yo, you could be like a supporting character that dies, but he was the main, he character, the main character. And he died, um, I thought it was on set, but it was actually mm-hmm. um, with the stunt driver. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I forgot that one, but it was just like, oh, you could be famous and die. Yeah, like, I really dying. thought you when, could when, not. Was that? Bro, that was a, I was in college, so that was between 2011 and 2014. Yeah. Or I, okay. And so when Kobe died, it was like, oh, fame, it doesn't matter how much money or notoriety, you can be touched. Yeah, you can. And I feel like, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 very interesting how we, I think, in a lot of times in life, we can like, we can like feel like we can outplan God, like mm. you know, we feel like we can outplan Him. Like I'm gonna make all these plans, I'm gonna do all this stuff, like I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and it's and that's just not the reality, you know, of the situation. And um, I feel like as believers, like it forces us just to take our lives a lot more seriously, mm-hmm. um, and who we're touching and what we're doing with our time, mm. because like the time, you know, what I'm saying like being stewards of our time. Woo. Yeah. Being stewards of, a t- of our time is like one of the biggest things I like took out of that situation. I think probably the first death that I took like mm. <laughs> pretty seriously was a great, it was Whitney Houston. Really, Whitney Houston. Bro, like, I forgot. Well, see, I think that I took that one a little differently because she was on drugs. Like I'm like, oh, if you're doing something bad, like of course you're gonna like rappers die all the yeah, time. And they're sense. celebrities. It just makes sense. But I was like, Kobe wasn't doing yeah, nothing. Yeah, he was like a family man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he was, was like, a family man. man and, you know, had retired and was super successful. And So what are you saying about Whitney Houston? We, yeah, she was just one of those people that I was like, oh, snap, folks that I, like, looked up to, like, you know, whatever. I like their music or I like their artistry. Now, I, I didn't look up to Whitney Houston, but I like her music, her artistry. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, she, I was like, oh, snap, it's, it's real out here. Like, 
I didn't, I was too, I was really, I never got into Michael Jackson as much when I was younger, mm. but we we loved Whitney. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like Michael, bro. I remember that one, too. I was like, I, bro, I was in the car when Michael died. It was all over the news. I heard it on the radio, and, like, the whole world, like, stopped. And it the did. same thing happened with Kobe mm-hmm. Bryant, and it was just a shock. And I think, um, like, I guess, like, my second point would be is, like, the planning, right? Kobe Bryant was in the second phase of his life, right? He just stopped um, the NBA, just retired, won an Oscar, and he had all these plans of uh, becoming like a movie maker. Yeah. And so I think that's the reason that a lot of people got shook by it, it was because he was famous, but also it was so abrupt and it like ruined his plans. And it's like, yo, if he can have his plans ruined, God is no respecter of me. Like yep. th- 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 my th- plans can bro. also be <laughs> I think that's why everybody got shot. Like everybody thought they were untouchable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause we're all the main characters in our all lives. Not, yep. In our <laughs> own story. Yep, that's gonna happen. Yep, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I'm gonna have time to do that and this. And we just don't think that that might not happen. <laughs> the go- the gospel truth <laughs> that might not happen and, and, that, oh, go ahead. and in that light in that might not happen phase of thinking about those things it's just interesting and just like how does how does that change how we view god as well mm. talk about <laughs> it talk <laughs> like, you know in that sense of like oh yeah this gotta happen because i really wanted to i'm he wanted to raise his family Mm. That man wanted to raise his family. He wanted to do all those things. And so I think it really just calls into question just like how do you know what I'm saying is is God still not good? Mm. If talk about that that oh uh, goodness of God theology yeah, yeah. that came out too. <laughs> yes, like is God still not good if 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 I don't get to raise my family, if I don't get to do these things, like where where does that stand? Like how do how do where do we stand as believers? And how good God is. Is God just the orchestrator of my plans? You know what I'm saying? Is he just an accessory to benefit myself? Is yeah. he my he is he my accelerator? Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. the plan itself. Yeah. And um bruh, I think um so our favorite, like, well, kind of gospel teacher when it comes to podcasts he stopped doing podcasts and he need to get back to it is kb the rapper mm-hmm. with reach records come on back KB. and <laughs> his very first podcast bro you you missed it i missed it cyrus missed it um is on death i was like how do we all skip the first episode but he said um the americas in the western like hemisphere is insulated away from death and that really shook me or however because I, I never noticed like how insulated it's like so he said in his podcast is that when people are sick they either like die at home with their families or they die in the hospital mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you do not have to see this yeah. or whatever and um but if you go to like eastern countries people are if you sick but you see them dot bodies in the street or whatever or um, they're in your home and it's, yep. it's very regular yep. or whatever and so when you have like an experience of like oh I don't have to see death or encounter it um, you'll make death be a become a bad thing and I think that's what you're saying of like isn't God still good and I think that's another thing about just the Western um, Christianity is that well I'll say two points. I, I do want you to talk on it. Um, number one, um, Hebrews 11. We are pilgrims here. Mm-hmm. This, this is, is not, not our, our final this is not our home. thing. Yep. And that really came yep. out because yep. this is not our home. a lot of people were upset that mm-hmm. he died. But it's like, why are we upset? Like, um, I don't know um, Kobe's eternal resting place. I, I watched interviews and it sounded like he was a believer. Um, that's all I'm going mm-hmm. off. I ain't, yeah, 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 I ain't yeah. saying nothing else. Yeah. And so if he's a believer and he's like, like if, if this is like a hotel, it's, it's like a spiritual hotel. We're not supposed to like be planted here. You don't live in my hotels. Yep. You go to your home or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So that's not a big deal. But um, that's number one. But number two is like uh, what you're saying about goodness. And the gospel is not a gospel of comfort. Jesus died harshly yeah harshly and yeah. so it's like oh if bad things happen god isn't in it 
God was actively in Jesus' crucifixion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eleven, I mean, we'll say 10 because Judas died, but 10 out of the remaining 11 disciples died terribly. Yep. Terrible on. deaths. And John was the only one who didn't have a terrible death. Um, I don't remember all of them. I know Peter was crucified upside, upside down. down. Yeah. Um, one of them was pulled by horses by his limbs, separated that. Is that, that like boy. James? Or like that? Bro, it sounded like it yeah. was James. <laughs> it, was bad. it was bad, right? And um, all of them died. And it's like, yo, if, well, in short, I don't think enough people reading their Bible for real um, to know about, like, hey, the Bible really harps on suffering a lot mm -hmm. but God's in the midst of it just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego um, three Hebrew boys like the Lord didn't let them escape the fire he was in the midst mm -hmm. of it and so um, the book of James also says this about how um, suffering it's like it, it, it should not be uncommon mm -hmm. to us it's, it, James says you should expect this mm -hmm. as a believer and um, even I thought about we have lost the joy for suffering because um, in the God, well, not the gospel. I think it's I think it's James, but it's definitely New Testament. It says, "Rejoice in suffering, for you know that you're sharing in the work of your Savior." Yeah, yeah. And so, if my life is all easy, I'm not sharing in His work. So that that is a little problematic. But those are my two points yeah. about the goodness of God still being there, and then wherever the first point. Yeah, was. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, I definitely agree. I feel like, and just to going back to your, um, you know, even Jesus said, like, you know, in your life, there will be, you know, there will be trials, there will be mm -hmm. suffering, but take heart, I've, I've overcome the world. Mm. And, um, like, that's just, that, like, that should give us a lot of comfort. And one, also, one thing also coming back to, to that is, like, us being very comfortable with, like, the sovereignty of God. Mm. And like, and can you that, teach the people what sovereignty <laughs> is? Because I think we do use pretty big words. Yeah, like yeah, we yeah, know yeah, what sovereignty yeah. means. I don't think everybody, especially yeah. if everybody is not reading a Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and and definitely keep me honest here. Like mm -hmm. when it's, where like where God is like He knows the end to the mm -hmm. beginning. Like He's literally there is there is nothing that's happening that's out of His understanding. That's mm -hmm. out of His control. Mm -hmm. Like. He's literally in in the midst of every situation, orchestrating it to the end that he knows is is to come. Mm -hmm. And so, like, and I feel like look, the Lord just having His hand and everything, because like, even the situations where like it's nothing that's just happening where God is like, oh snap, let me go ahead. And, you <laughs> because know? He'll be a very weak God. Yep. He'll be limited. Yep. It's like, what? My God didn't know that was going to yes, happen. Yes, He knew it was going to happen. <laughs> he not like, oh snap, oh my God, like, like God is not surprised that mm -hmm. our president is who our president is right now. He is there for a reason to orchestrate something that he's doing later on down the line. Mm -hmm. And so like, and so we have to be very, very comfortable with that. And the crazy thing where you going back, where you was talking about Hebrews 11 and us not being um, here, he not being, this is not being our home, us being just sojourners. Mm -hmm. And it just goes really deep into that, is that we also have to be comfortable with the fact, get it, get this, <laughs> is that a lot of things that people who were in faith, in Hebrews 11, that Jesus, that God started with people, they did, did not, not see, see the fulfillment of did those things. Not, man, the end of Hebrews is one of the soberest chapters they of the Bible. They did not see it. They did not see it. <laughs> they didn't. Bro, that verse be convicted me. I'm Listen. like, oh, wait, I'm going to do all this stuff. I ain't going to get the benefits. <laughs> I'm telling you. We uh, we focus real hard on that on the first six <laughs> verses of Hebrews. We love it. And, 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 you know, we love that faith, you know, and going into that. But when you get a little bit deeper in there, like, they get in there. Yo! <laughs> I'm telling you. So we have to be like, they didn't see it. So that's just, you know, case in point. Like, you know, and so there are things that we will start, you know what I'm saying, that we won't see the fulfillment of, like, in our days. Mm. You know, and that's, you know, the, you know, that was still probably one of the most sobering things that MLK ever said was he was like, right. I, I'm, I'm, I might not go there with you. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like he he understood that there was an expiration date out there. You know what I'm saying? So and bringing back that perspective is really needed right now, because even like um, I guess just the thought of like, yeah, like everything in this world is set up like I am important. 
or whatever. You are very important and precious to God, but you're <laughs> the Bible also says you're really not that important too. And that that that's like the, the tension mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um again another verse in Hebrews is like if God did not withhold his son from basically death and the crucifixion, how much more will he not reserve the rebellious angels for the yeah. day of judgment? Yeah. And also how much more will he not withhold you? And I was just like, yeah. Bro, it, bro, those scriptures be convicted the crap out of me because I'm like, yeah, right, right. Of Hebrews, is Jesus in his bag. did not escape this. Yeah, and so when I be feeling like I I'm God's favorite, mm -hmm. it's like, yes, you're His God's, you are, <laughs> you're His favorite, and Jesus was the beloved. Yeah, and yeah. he went through it, and it's just like, whoo, yeah. But uh, also doubling back to your um, your sovereignty part, right? I think people can um, benefit from learning about the like permissive will of God and like the perfect will of God. Yeah. So um, God is um, omniscient. So that's all knowing, right? So God has foresight, but it doesn't mean that um, everything is in his perfect will, yeah. but it's in his um, permissive, permissive will. Mm -hmm. And so an example of this is in Genesis Exodus when um, the Israelites were going to the promised land. The trip was only supposed to take 11 days, but because of their murmuring and their um, bad behavior, they have 40 years in the desert for a generation to die off. So his perfect will is, hey, you're gonna inherit the, um, the promised land, but his permissive will is like, hey, because like as a result, like a consequence of what you've been doing, you're going to have a generation will have to die off. That generation did not have to die off. Yeah. And so likewise, um, we see that in the book of Job of like the Lord allowing the devil to touch Job or whatever. And so um, Romans 8 talks about all things work to the good of those who love the Lord and are called according, according to, to his purpose. purpose. Yeah. And so I think that's like a really interesting theme of like, hey, the Lord does not orchestrate evil. And we see this in the book of James. It says, let no man say when he is tempted that he is tempted of God because God is not able to commit evil. So these are like kind of like hard things to grasp with your mind. Evil happens. God technically allows it because he's sovereign, but he does not orchestrate it. Right, right. And that's a pretty hard concept yeah, 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 like, yeah. because he's sovereign. But he's working it for our good. So we can look at like Jesus dying. It's like, that's a pretty evil thing. Like, <laughs> and Muslims make this argument. It's like, what type of good God will allow right, his son right, right, right. to go through that? But if we don't inherit hell, I, I would it's, count that as good. 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 <laughs> I would count good. that as good. Yep. No, that's, those are all really, really solid points. And I think, yeah, that's, I think it just forces us to just sober, just be more soberly see like what's going on out here and us to have like um, a real, you know, just a, a more, so, more sober perspective of what's, you know, of, of death in general. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, yeah, especially like in Western cultures, like, oh my God, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, that death violent, you know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. It's definitely something that I'm learning because mm -hmm. I don't, you know, this was definitely one of those depths where I was taken aback, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I, it really forced me to evaluate my time as a mm -hmm. believer. Yep. Oh, I, you, you led perfect into this other part of the depth, um, the kids on the plane. There were three kids on the plane, I think like 13 and under. And I think that's another part that shocked us about Kobe's death is that we think that youth makes us untouchable mm -hmm. and that that idea was obliterated that morning when that happened because bro I, I really be feeling that i'm like yo god god ain't gonna let me die not having kids um being broke <laughs> like all these like players because i'm young or like um uh, you don't have to share if you don't want to, but I know in your experience um, serving at your church, you have been seeing a lot of death lately. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely um, one of those things where people just that are close to you, they just start passing. Like it's, you know, it's hard. You know, it really, it really is hard. Um, but you know, a lot of these situations, like um, you know, I I have I think sometimes we have to look back and just see. All these folks were believers. They were super involved in church. I mean, you know, one of one of the um, 
um, the ladies who passed was my actually my church's um, co-founder, mm. and um, so but she did like she did the work of God like her entire life. You know what I'm saying? Like the last 30, 40 years of her life were completely, fully committed to God, and um, I'm thankful for that. You know, mm-hmm. and um, and it's like it's she she did good work, like mm-hmm. well done, like you know, and so um, it's a blessing to see people who have lives like that. Um, but you know, it's also like uh, it's kind of where it's crazy. I think one thing that's interesting where I saw about her life that she always talked about was the fact that she um, was actually she and her husband were ministered to by teenagers. Mm. They came to Christ through teenagers, mm. and it's just like you know, it's like mm-hmm. oh snap! It kind of breaks this you know, this thought that like, I can't be young and impactful. Mm. I can't be young and live for God. I can't be young and bring people to Christ. Like I'ma just sin, sin, sin till I get old. And then get old. I get my last minute. God, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely one of those things where it just makes you reevaluate your life and how you're serving God. Yep, bro, that, um, it's here. I think it's in Second Timothy. Um, it says, "Hey, don't despise your youth." youth yeah. And um, I really like that the Bible, especially like the New Testament, really like kind of like focuses on that. It's like, "Hey, young men will like dream dreams. Old men will like prophesy and stuff." And I think um, we we really shouldn't like prolong our uses for the kingdom. It's yeah. like, yo, if I forgot, like. David killed Goliath at 13 mm-hmm. or something yeah, and he, then he didn't become king until way later yeah, 20 think, years later yep and yep. so it's like don't don't it like even the Bible says like hey don't waste your youth and I think that's like the importance of the fivefold ministry you have old people or elders to guide the zeal and the excitement like, like we all know when you first get saved bro you are on fire yeah, and so if you stifle young people um because you're a little hesitant or um whatever or you just don't have young people then um you lose like that zeal because you know you get older you kind of get like bitter or you just get tired or busy and you need young people to kind of like convict you it's like dang what happened to my fire bro when Kanye got saved I was like my fire I need that yeah, <laughs> yeah you really do yeah I yeah so many situations I mean I mean all so many situations in the Bible where God used young people majority of those stories those people were young Mary was young Jeremiah like a lot of those people were young and um yeah i i it definitely convicts me i work with i work with teenagers and so um it's good like i really try to get them serious about the things of god now and some of them they just get it you know um others we work with a little bit more um but yeah i was just like bro dude don't waste your life like don't don't waste time trying to figure out like what's better than god you know what i'm saying what's better you know, then a life that's fully turned towards him. And bro, don't lie, I felt that way. I felt like I was like, bro, if Kobe died, or like I, I, don't, I know it's selfish, but I look right back. I was like, yo, if I die right now, I would feel like I wasted my life. Mm-hmm. I was like, dang, bro, I really could have. I was like, I could did so much. I, I was literally like, I could did so much more for the Lord. I was just like, dang, like I what I was living like I had time. Yeah, I was living like. I, Sorry. Yep, yep, yep. I remember. It. Yeah, that's probably one of the most convicting things <laughs> I heard. Like as a as a believer, like grew up. I grew up in church, but really just let my life get off a track for a few years. And when I finally really started to open back up and really come back to God, I remember. I remember getting to going to a church, and God was like, "Yeah, the enemy's biggest trick, believers. He wants you to think that you got time." And then, so the last point that I had, um, and you and I talked about it off camera, is I guess deaf theology or whatever um <laughs> definitely want to be sensitive here but i i don't want people I, like when i got into faith i was like i so my story is that i got into faith no church background at all and i just read the bible like cover to cover to figure out what christianity was and so when i entered the christian space i was like there's a lot of culture here that i don't see in the bible and then i'm like why why do we say this or whatever and so i'm not saying where kobe bryant or anybody is like eternal salvation is but everyone always says they're in a better place mm. and deaf theology mm. <laughs> is really bad and so um 
I'm not saying they're in heaven, I'm not saying they're in hell or however, but everyone should know like, hey, this is what happens when you die. Yeah. So in short, if you ever want to just want to know what happens when you die is 1 Thessalonians 4 um, verses 13 to 18. And so in short, we're all waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So the dead in Christ, they are asleep. The alive in Christ um, are waiting. And um, so in short, when you die, the next thing you know is the second coming of Christ. And it says um, the people that basically um, rise into the air will be the dead in Christ first. So people who gave their lives to Jesus, but then the ones that are alive on earth and they rise um, in the sky. Boom. There's like a thousand years of judgment, like tribulations, all that other stuff. But when everyone keeps saying like they're in a better place, I don't think people know like, hey, this is why we say R.I.P. It says um, rest in peace because the it's, it's literally um, it's Christian um, like doctrine and ideology. We count it as a sleep until um, basically like the judgment comes. And so I just thought that was really important with everyone. Um, I guess knowing like death theology is mm -hmm. like, hey, you're asleep pretty much. You don't know that you're asleep, but everyone around you knows that like yeah, you're, yeah, de yeah. you're dead. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's important for people to know that. Um, any other points you want to <laughs> give to the people about um, either Kobe Bryant or um, death overall? What? Um, how do you how do you feel about um, scripture where it just talks about and that's just talking about that death theology where it just talks about be, being absent from the body, like from being, mm. being absent from the body to be present with the Lord? Um, I like <laughs> there's a few songs on it, but um, it says we are not natural beings. Um, basically we are spiritual beings living a natural life mm -hmm. and so um, I think it's it's in one of the John so either first second third John mm -hmm. it says God is spirit so we are also spirit so th we have a body this is dust or however but our spirit is the thing that's in us that's eternal mm -hmm. or however and so right now um, I think it's first Corinthians 14 it says we prophesy in part we speak in tongues in part. And so right now we just have a part of the glory to come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, to really like, even like if you're the most anointed, most supernatural person, that's only a part of like being what Jesus is. So that verse you're talking about being present with the Lord is like, yo, you literally came in fathom like what glory would God look like. The idea that there is on like when um, Jesus comes back, new heaven, new earth, there's gonna be no sun no stars, no moon, because you don't need it. Like there's gonna yep, be no yep, night yep. because his glory is gonna be so, it's gonna be so bright. <laughs> like right, right, right. you can't even wrap your mind <laughs> about how bright his glory is. And that's like, I, that. that's what makes me resonate with that verse. It's just like to be present with the Lord and like absent in your body is like, yo, that's an encounter and experience we can't even begin to know what that feels like and yeah. so I have to be like yo you did it <laughs> like you are you are <laughs> you are where we want to be so that's what that verse makes me think of gotcha perfect perfect I yeah I think the biggest thing to take away from um from this whole just from Kobe's death and just the passing all those things is just use your time wisely mm -hmm. you know as a believer like use your time wisely um, reevaluate like what am I spending time on is this thing for me is it for the glory of God like in my I think a lot of times in life right these days we're really pressured especially on social media to build social media to build like these kingdoms towards mm. ourselves and like oh I'm this I'm that I'm this I'm that and I got all these things um, that you can't take with yes, you yes you can't take with you and uh, I think it's just evaluating like what what real work am I doing for the Lord like you know who am I you know and essentially like who am I taking with me you know what I'm saying to heaven like who, who am I taking with me mm. um, versus like there are people that I'm whose life I'm planning into and I haven't even shared the gospel with them mm. or, you know I, I've never invited them to church or I've, ne I've never sold them anything you know I'm just here making a check going home or whatever I'm doing so yeah 
I don't want to really open it up, but um, it also made me think about the people around me. A lot of people were like in reflection, or even like, Sha well, we could open it up. Um, Shaq was talking about him and Kobe were not on good terms. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and like, everybody really thought they were because they did the little ESPN face to face. And Shaq was like, we haven't talked in three years. And I was like, dang. And I, and I know, um, bro, I was very convicted. I was like, um, I, was, I, I had to repent a lot. I had to repent a lot. <laughs> and just like um, unforgiveness, um, it definitely is sin and it opens you up to the demonic. But even like I thought about my parents and I was like, dang, I really wish we were closer and I, I, need, to make, I need to make more effort mm -hmm. for it. Or um, John knows when my aunt died, um, I took it really harshly because um, she was sick and she had cancer and the Holy Spirit told me to call her and I didn't call her. And I was like, I got time. And um, I didn't know she had cancer. I, know, like, I knew she was sick or whatever, but I don't know how I was in college and stuff like that. And then when she died, I was like, like he, he let me know. Like mm -hmm. he literally <laughs> let me know. And so um, I really evaluated like all my relationships, the ones I wasted time with. And I was like, man, this person not even in my yeah. life anymore. They're not really that important. The ones that are important, like, come like friends come and go but family is like yo legit or yeah. whatever and so i it really made me think about my parents i was like i have to do better with them yeah yeah you do not have all that time with people that's i really hope that a lot of people um went and reached out to folks and if you haven't done that yet do it you know reach out to the people that are in your life that you fell out with and yeah, I ain't talked to my sister in, in four years. I ain't talked to my daddy in two years. I ain't talked to so-and-so and so-and-so in this. I'm like, bro, you do, you do not know how much time you got with that person. 2020 is showing out. Oh, yeah. So, yo, thank y'all for watching. Um, I do want to end just simply with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, um, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back to um, judge the world. He's going to give us either eternal life or eternal damnation. And um, the gospel is the gospel of repentance. So, all those who uh, repent and believe in him uh, will be born again. They will uh, inherit eternal life. And yo, that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And everybody else, good luck. <laughs> um, John, thanks for uh, being with us. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Make sure to support him. Um, plug oh, your social yeah. media um, and his clothes that he's wearing. Yeah. He got a cool hoodie on, so plug yourself, John. Yeah, Poet John Wood. That's uh, Poet John Wood on Instagram and Twitter, poetjohnwood.com. The brand is called Stained Glass Apparel. That's uh, Stained Glass ATL. Um, StainedGlassApparel.com. I know that's a lot. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. Yeah. Everything's going to be on the screen. And um, make sure to support just by liking, subscribing on the Meat Not Milk um, podcast. We're going to have kind of these Bible study, not Bible study talks about like kind of like to um, topical um, pop culture or whatever. And what it teaches us about like Christian principles. Yeah. And um, check out another video or whatever. And Slick, I, I just want to end with prayer. I'll, I'll be praying enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, dear Lord, we just want to thank you for this time. We can come together um, just to teach. I thank you for John's life and just his wisdom being here. An amazing friend and um, man of God. Bless him um, supernaturally in um, relationships, finances, and uh, authority. Uh, for he has favor with man and with God, so open doors. Lord, uh, we um, pray for the hearts of the listeners that they will come into repentance and um, that they will just have a kingdom mindset, uh, mindset and a kingdom perspective on death and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, that any non-believers that um, are drawn to this podcast or this video will just um, hear the gospel and just uh, feel the weight and the um, word of the eternity and this life here is just a vapor but the life um, to come is eternal so um, let them have uh, just a eternal mindset and just all, let us all have for, uh, repentance where we have not been good stewards over our time we have not been good stewards over relationships that we have had and lord um, 
just let your word and your scriptures and just even sometimes circumstances convict us to repentance and also um, change behavior that we don't um, feel remorseful for a couple of months and just go back to living how we are living but um, have a changed life and a changed mind. Um, let's live fruitful and empowered. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks for watching. Yep.